Massachusetts Republican Party Chair Amy Carnavale is our guest. Let's go on the record. She leads a party that can now boast a win, a new Republican in the state Senate. Is this a turning point for a party that has struggled on Beacon Hill? The chair is at the table. From WCVB Channel 5, the inside word from Washington to Beacon Hill. Today's newsmakers are going on the record. Welcome to OTR. I'm Ben Simino, along with New Center 5 political reporter Sharman Sacchetti. Ed's off this morning. With us is Massachusetts GOP chair Amy Carnavale. She's the chair of the Massachusetts Republican Party. She's also a government affairs advisor for the KNL Gates law firm. She worked in the administration of President George H.W. Bush and served as chief of staff to former Congressman George Nethercutt of Washington State. She holds a B.A. in political science from George Washington University. Amy, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. Let's start with lawmakers on Beacon Hill agreeing on a deal for a $3 billion supplemental budget. $250 million would be set aside to go and address the migrant shelter crisis. Families right now, we see them sleeping in the state transportation building. Uh, more are on a waiting list. But Republicans are currently blocking this bill. What are the issues? here that Republicans have with this? Well, the issue really is the underlying issue of the right to shelter law. Uh, the current law really is unsustainable for our state budget. Massachusetts has always been a welcoming state. Uh, we welcome migrants, uh, but we've reached a tipping point uh, where it's really unsustainable for our taxpayers and communities to continue to shoulder this bur burden without substantive reforms to the right to shelter law. And so that's what Republicans want to see. But so we're at the point now where this conference committee has come out with its report and it's really an up or down vote. So how long can this go? And, and does it appear as though Republicans have at least enough leverage in informal sessions? Yes. So this is a problem that was really created by the Democratic leadership because this bill should have been taken up in an informal session when there could have been amendments and a right, an opportunity uh, to alter the bill and allow it debate and dialogue. Uh, unfortunately, you know, we're now in a position uh, where uh, they're trying to take take it up uh, without the opportunity to amend the legislation. And Republicans just think that that's wrong. There's not been adequate consultation on this issue. So is your issue with the process or the policy? Because it sounds like you're talking about both. I think it's both. It's both process and policy. And on the process side, it, really the issue of transparency and accountability is something that we see time and time again on Beacon Hill. Democrats not not willing to negotiate bills uh, in, in the open um, and allow opportunities for amendment and debate. And so raises for state workers also included in this um, informal session process here. Is it worth holding that up? We all know how much inflation has gone up in the last year. Yeah, so Republicans have no issue with the raises for state workers. Uh, inflation is, uh, is out of control in Massachusetts and we need to take care of that issue. Uh, but. Again, it, it's at a point where the migrant shelter crisis is unsustainable and we need systematic reforms. So I really applaud our Republican leadership in the House and Senate uh, for standing up to this 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 broken pro process to demand accountability. Well, let me let me just ask you, because the speaker has really come out with a statement blasting Republicans for their obstructionism on this issue, uh, even though Democratic leadership is really what what got I think everybody can agree the situation. The situ Situation to where it is right now. But I do want to ask because I mean, are Republicans grandstanding at this point? Because eventually, if formal sessions are held, uh, it's, it seems as though none of this will, will pass. On, on, uh, excuse me, it seems as though all of this will pass. So, you know, it's a nearly $3 billion measure. So, and again, it would be very easy for the Democratic leadership to come back into formal session to allow debate and dialogue on this issue and allow votes. Um, and again, the shelter crisis uh, really needs to be addressed in formal session with systematic reforms. And, I, you know, I also uh, uh, would ho try to hold the feet, uh, feet to the fire of the governor and in working with the legislature to try to address this issue because, you know, she has, she has a responsibility here, too. Well, the system's going to run out of them. funding in weeks. Exactly right. So how, how long can Republicans yeah. hold this up? So, you know, again, I would turn back to the Democrats to say, let's come back into formal session and allow these votes. All right, let's talk about a win for the mass GOP. State Senator Peter Durant was sworn in last week after a special election victory, beating a Democrat in the Worcester and Hampshire district. So what was his secret sauce here? What's the secret sauce to electing a Republican 
in the Commonwealth? So a couple of factors. First, uh, Representative Peter Durant, now State Senator Peter Durant, was a terrific candidate. He had served the district as a state representative. Um, and the issues that he talked about was, A, the migrant shelter crisis, which we just covered, um, B, um, accountability and transparency in, in, on Beacon Hill, and two-party government, the need for two-party government. We're seeing now that on Beacon Hill, uh, we just have one-party government, and by electing more uh, Republicans to office, this is this is what will well we can hold the feet to the fire of the Democrats. So speaking of that, I want to show you a picture. There currently are four GOP Senate members. So four that those are the four uh, Republican members of the state Senate out of forty. So how much can there really be checks and balances when you only have one tenth of the members of the state Senate? Well, every Republican that we add really adds to those numbers. But even more important than the numbers is is I think that the stage that is set for going into 2024 when we're recruiting more candidates to run for office. Uh, we just heard word that um, a competitive state Senate seat down on Cape Cod is, is going to be vacant, held by a Democrat. Uh, we may have a, a sitting state representative run for that seat. He's looking carefully at it. So I, I think having this win really sets the stage looking ahead to 2024 to add to our numbers. And how important is it to not talk about the elephant, frankly, in the party, pardon the pun, uh, Donald Trump? in this state. Yeah, so we've seen before that Republicans can run and win in a presidential election year. Um, certainly presidential election years are always more difficult for Republicans for a variety of factors. But looking back to um, 2016, uh, when Trump was on the ballot, we actually added a seat in the state legislature. So it can be done. And I trust the voters of the Commonwealth to be able to differentiate between candidates. Um, certainly we've seen that with, with Governor Baker time and time again. All right, let's talk about presidential politics. There will be a Republican debate in Alabama on Wednesday. and former President Trump. He will not be there. But Nikki Haley will be. And she's on a bit of a roll right now. Last week, the Koch Network, its billion-dollar war chest, has decided to back Haley. Do you think she can take the nomination away from Trump? So we'll see. Um, you know, here in Massachusetts, my role as state party chair is to set the playing field for the presidential candidates through the delegate selection process. We've done that. And every candidate will have the opportunity to earn delegates in Massachusetts to go to the convention to actually nominate the president. So I'm pleased to see that Nikki Haley will be here in Boston in a couple of weeks, um, engaging uh, with uh, voters and also raising some money for her campaign. So, uh, you know, um, sh I think she can be competitive. Uh, but again, um, you know, n I would just point out that n nobody's voted yet in the primary process. So there's still a long way to go. Do you think some of the other candidates should get out of the race? Christy DeSantis? You know, um, you know that, that's a decision for those candidates to make. Um, I, you know, I think I think the process will will play itself out uh, as the as the and weeks I, ahead. I do want to ask if Donald Trump is the nominee, will you support him? Uh, yes. Uh, so as Republican Party chair, we will support the nominee of the party. But there's been a call up from some Republicans to say if there's really going to be a viable alternative to the former president. These other some of these candidates that are polling very low. I mean, Chris Christie is doing OK in New Hampshire, but he's skipping Iowa. Some of those folks got to get out of the race. So it really comes down to a two person race. Do you believe that? Uh, again, you know, I really leave it up to the candidates to make that decision. You know, it, it's still a couple of months away until voters cast their votes in New Hampshire. And I think New Hampshire will really be a key test. Um, and then perhaps after New Hampshire, it, it may be helpful to have a, a narrowing of the field.